Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a replacement of the pads on the rear of the VFR 800 VTEC. Thanks for stopping by. Let's uh, get the rear wheel off and have a look at what we're going to be doing. Okay, now we uh, now we have access to the caliper. What we need to do is uh, just whip it off, and then we can uh, we can get into the pads and start uh, replacing them. Okay, because I recently uh, replaced all the brake fluid um, in this uh, in this bike. Um, obviously, the the brake fluid is at the upper mark, um, and obviously, as as the pads wear and the pistons moved out further, the level will drop slightly. Because I recently replaced it, what I need to do is I do need to remove a little bit of fluid um, because when I when I compress the piston back into the back into the caliper, it will push the fluid back up into the reservoir. And because it's at the upper limit, what will happen is it will likely overflow. So before I um, before I touch the caliper, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of fluid out just to be on the safe side. Put that in my drip tray. And then, when I push the piston in, what I can do is I can keep an eye on this and I'll be able to see the level raise, and it may well come back up to the upper level. If it's beyond the upper level, uh, at that point, what I'll do is I'll just remove a little bit more and um, we should be all fine. And what I'll do, I'll just pop the cap back on that for the moment, just to stop uh, any dust or any rubbish getting in there. And um, let's now uh, get the caliper off and have a look at it. Right then, what we need to do is we need to remove this caliper. In order to get it off, there's one mounting bolt there and the other one is just here. Um, uh, where am I? Where am I looking? Just there, actually. I'm not sure if you can uh, see that properly or not. Um, my finger is literally on it right now just there that's the other one um, so I need to remove those um, before we do so though what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this little rubber cap off because that is the pad retaining pin behind there the uh, these little rubber caps actually um, more often than not get lost uh, it's not unusual for them to be missing and um, they're actually missing off the front of mine um, I'm not going to lose sleep about it I uh, maintain my calipers enough that um, it's not going to cause me any real dramas. Right, so what I'll do, I'll crack that off now. Um, just loosen it because it's easier to loosen it while the caliper is still fitted to the bike. And then what I need to do is I need to remove both the both of the caliper bolts. So let's do that next. one and then the other one is a real pig to get to um, in fact it's actually a lot easier with a deep socket so what I'll do I'll grab my deep socket and then we'll crack that one off right let's get me a little bar on it's a bit awkward this one to get into obviously it's doable Come on, get on. There we go. Right. And there we are. Now, this one's a bit awkward to get into with a ratchet, unfortunately, because as the bolt comes out, what it does is it doesn't give 
the tool any room to be able to get the tool off the bolt um, as it winds out so you're better off just doing it like so and eventually it will come out with fingers Should be able to get into here and undo it with our fingers now. first one out and then the second one And there we go. There's the caliper off. Now, what we don't want to do, don't really let, don't go, uh, don't go letting it hang by the pipe work. Just keep hold of it. And there we go. Right. What we need to do is remove the brake pad retaining pin all the way out. side take the pads out all right now these these don't look too bad actually these are um these look to be the same as the ebc ones uh, no they're not actually they're not ebc at all slightly different i'm not sure what brand these ones are uh, yeah there's still a fair bit of life in them but i've got a, uh, a brand new set so they're going to go in first what i'm going to do is i'm going to give this an incredibly good clean because it's absolutely filthy in there. Pop the uh, pad spring out, that's stainless steel, that will clean up nicely. And what we'll do is take this little guide plate out, again, stainless steel, and uh, we'll give that a clean. And then we'll get in here, give all of this a good scrub up, and uh, we, should be, uh, we should be good. Now, the, uh, the pistons themselves, um, aren't actually that uh, protruding that much so um, we probably won't have to uh, worry too much about the brake fluid level uh, on this occasion however if they are out and the pads are really really thin obviously the pistons will be further out so as you push them in what you're doing is you're pushing the fluid back up into the reservoir so if it is already at the upper limit just be mindful of the fact that the fluid level will raise and it will it, it's got to go somewhere and you don't want it leaking out so be uh be careful of that and uh, bear that in mind right what i'm going to do is give this all a good clean up uh, and then we'll uh, prepare it for uh, for the new pads get a bit of brake cleaner in there give it a good scrub with an old toothbrush old toothbrushes are perfect for this job Off. 
on this one I'm gonna I'm cleaning off the slide pins as well get it all nice nice and clean Okay. Let's get rid of the rubbish on the mountain faces for the piston slide plate. Make sure it's all good. Right, next. Clean these. It may seem fairly trivial, but given the, given these bits a good clean is essential to good operation of the brakes. Sure, there's all the brake dust is off. Get in there with the toothbrush again. Happy with that. And the same with the spring plate. That obviously needs a good scrub. Toothbrush on it. Doesn't take much effort and it'll come up looking really nice and clean and shiny, just like that. Just like so. Okay, spring plate goes in that way round. As you can see, there's a little protrusion uh, on the casting and that little gap goes on like so and clips into place just like that. Right, the pistons aren't sticking out all that far. But what I'm gonna do is just give them a press in there we are, they're all good, nice and clean as well. Next, what I want to do is I want to refit the caliper mounting bracket. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grease up the slides with a little bit of red rubber grease. Um, you can use all sorts of greases for, for this. Um, this is a silicon based grease, um, which is really good for this kind of purpose. And it doesn't damage rubber because obviously this pin does have a rubber sleeve that goes over the top of it, which is just there, look. And the same on this one, a bit of, little bit of red rubber grease because it goes into that one. And um, yeah, that'll, that'll ensure that they operate perfectly well. Slide it back on just like that. And then that one pops in. So that one, a bit, a bit fiddly to get in. Come on, go back out, back out. And there we go. Push it in till such time as you get all the way in, and then you can see that the rubber boot pops into its little 
recess on the pin and then just wipe off any excess grease because you don't need excess grease in and around your brakes for obvious reasons. Okay, next what we want to do, take your little guide plate and fit that back in position like so. And there we go. We're now ready to fit the new pads. So let's grab them. As it happens on the VFR, the pads for the rear are identical to the ones in the front. Now, interestingly enough, if you go to a Honda dealer, they'll, um, they'll list the rear ones as a separate part number. I'm not really sure why. Um, the only thing I can think of is that perhaps um, the OE spec Honda pads have um, a different compound to the front. I, I, I don't actually know. I'm sure somebody probably does and they could tell me in the comments below. Um, but certainly the EBC ones are identical in every way to the ones that you fit in the front caliper. Now, one point I'm going to make is I don't put copper slip on pads. It's not something I do. If you want to crack on by all means, but I don't and I never will. The factory workshop manuals don't specify it. If 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 it was required, they would. So um, enough said on the matter, personally, to be honest. Right. The uh, pads go in just like so. Obviously, that little recess there sits in this plate at the back. The other one in like so. And then what we need is our little pin, which I've got just here. Let's give it a little bit of a clean up. There is supposed to be a little tiny little rubber o-ring on there. I'm not bothered about the fact that it's missing. It's not gonna affect the operation of the brake whatsoever. But the next time I change the pads, what I may well do is um, just buy some new uh, some new re retaining pins. They're not expensive. I'll, I'll pick three up next time I change the pads. Um, pop it through, just like so, making sure that they're seated in every direction correctly. Put a little bit of pressure against the spring plate and there she goes, she's in. And then just tighten her up. That's up to touch. I've not talked it or anything yet, because um, what I'll do, I'll talk that once we've got the caliper mounted. Right, there we are. That's the pads fitted into the caliper. A little bit of excess grease just there. Let's get rid of that. Um, there we go. As you can see, the gap in there is far wider than it needs to be for the disc, but when we apply the brake, that'll close up. Okay, next thing, let's get the caliper mounted back onto the bike. Right then, let's get the caliper mounted back onto the bike. Now, the ho both those hoses go through this retaining uh, this retaining ring here. Let's offer the caliper up to the disc, making sure that the pads go either side of the disc for obvious reasons. May need to just slide the caliper ever so slightly and just keep an eye. There we go, we've got her on. And then what I need to do is put the bolts back in. I have put a little bit of thread lock on each one. A little bit of Loctite on each one. And the awkward one, which is up here. Let's just get them up to touch. That's the first one.
and that's the second one up to touch. Okay, let's get the torque wrench and torque them up. The caliper bolts are 31 newton meters. It's one, and this awkward one. Two. And there we are, that's those. Next thing we need to do is the pad retaining pin. The pad retaining pin is 18 Newton meters. So I'll adjust my torque wrench to 18. And torque that. There we go. Right. Only other thing that I need to do is fit this little rubber, little rubber bung that goes over the pad retaining pin. And there we go. That is the brake pads on the rear changed. Um, not a particularly difficult job, but necessary. And obviously, um, it, you can just pull them apart, swap the pads out, and, and away you go. But it, it pays to just give them a good clean, give them a little bit of um, attention when you do it. That way, you know that um, they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to work the way that they should for a decent amount of time. Okay, guys, all I've got to do now is um, put the wheel back on and just double check the um, the fluid level in the uh, in the reservoir. What I'm going to do beforehand is I'm just going to reach over and press on the rear brake pedal a few times um, it will take a couple of pumps and then what that does is it pushes the piston out um, so that the pads go against the disc and then that way um, they're ready to go um, the other thing I will point out obviously is brand new pads need bedding into the disc don't just go out like a bat of hell uh, giving it the beans let the brakes settle in uh, and it should be good to go within about 100, 150 miles probably anyway guys Thank you very much for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all again for the next one. Thank you very much. Bye bye now.